Well, you know, I don't ever talk much about it till after the season, but I, I do think my deal is we got an opportunity to be good. Uh, obviously, we got everybody back, got some playing experience. Uh, we're a little untested at center. Losing Jay Guillermo, but I got all the commas in the world and uh, Justin Falsonelli. You know, Justin had never snapped a ball, and uh, I say with he, he agreed, but he re reluctantly went over and tried it. And uh, you know, it's really difficult uh, to do when you've never snapped the ball. But he has adjusted to it well. He uh, very smart young man. Uh, you wouldn't believe it, but he can put a computer together with spare parts and make it thing. He's a video guru, but uh, I said, now this is a little bit easier than that. You just point and we go that direction. So he's had a lot of lot of fun doing it. But, you know, time will tell. And I've and, uh, been working Gage Cervinka there. He moved over from defense. And Gage, too, never played much offense. And he's uh, taken really well to snapping the football. Looks great. Ran great the other day. He's about 320 pounds now. So we got a chance to have some pretty good bulk in there as well. Uh, and then, of course, you got Zach Giella and a few guys like that. Uh, may even work Cade Stewart there some, local product. Man, he's doing really well. Uh, at the weigh-in uh, this week, he weighed 298 and running well, uh, just doing a great job. So I couldn't be more excited about him. The depth chart that came out, Sean started the last six or seven games and, and played pretty well, right. but it had Tremaine or Sean there, so that's a Tremaine, open competition in camp, I'm guessing. Right. Tremaine had a great spring, playing both left and right tackle, and uh, he's really making up ground. He's, uh, You know, it's always a learning curve. Some uh, go a little faster than others. Uh, uh, having... Uh, recruited Sean directly myself. Uh, you know, obviously I talked a little more offensive line play with him, so he he really was intrigued by it. He loves it and studied it and, and kind of knew a little more, but now Tremaine has acclimated and, you know, he's playing both right and left and uh, he's a, he's a, a shorter guy by most people's standards. I don't measure that. I measure where you can play or not. And, uh, boy, he's done great. So I'm excited about him. Looks good uh, right now. You've had a couple of really good good leaders and, and outgoing personalities in Macklin and Guillermo the last couple of years. Um, Mitch Hyatt's kind of quieter by nature, it's the same way with Crowder. Who, who do you see kind of taking over that, that vocal personality in the offensive line room? That's a good point. We need that. Uh, you know, I like to have fun. Sometimes they take me too seriously. Uh, they don't understand some when I'm joking, when I'm not. Sometimes, but those two did, and they could, they could get it. Cause I would tell them, hey, watch this. I'm gonna get this one today. Uh, Y'all might have to help them a little bit. So, but you know, they they understood. We need that. You know, in our world, uh, only thing you get are booze. Nobody. Coming in today, listen to the radio. I listen to all of them. They want to talk about this, that, and that. Not one mention of offensive line. And you look at them, and not a fat person sitting over there. You know why? <laughs> so, but uh, you know th these guys are—they love the game too. And I I'm excited. Uh, my wife is always the first to notice. Well, they don't like to have fun, or they're too serious. Well. It, they're coming around. They're coming out of the shell a little bit. They, they, they've learned they can cut up with me some. So. But there's a time for play and there's a time for work, and that, that's all I ask of them to be able to understand between the two. And Eric and, and uh, Jay, they really did that well. You've coached a lot of really good offensive linemen. Where does Mitch fit in with some of those better ones that you've coached? Well, I, I, here's the way I categorize them. I, I, I got so many over the years. I forget how long I've been coaching. I don't look in the mirror. I feel 18 and been blessed. That's why I don't look at it in the mirror because I look. Who is that guy? But <laughs> the people that I've coached, it's just been phenomenal. I've had some great ones. You would never even recognize their name because they were undersized people. But they were, you know, they never got to go to the NFL. But they were better than the NFL players that I've had. Uh, you know, but it's just the world we live in. But Mitch, 
Mitch is one of those, he's a rare breed. I do not have to raise my voice at Mitch. And you know, this is a motivating, loud, get after it group uh, area that we're in. But he listens, he usually gets it the first time. You don't have to coach attitude or effort. He's 100%. My guys always say, well, you don't ever fuss at Mitch. I said, well, I don't have to. You know, he tries to do it. Does he do it right all the time? No. You know, he's human. But uh, it's just a joy to be around. So in that regard, he fits right there with the best of them. Uh, what does he need to work on? Well, he's added some bulk. He ran the other day just as fast as he's ever ran. Uh, so uh, working his hands. You know, the boy's just a sophomore. Going want to be a junior, so pretty neat. You had Blake in the in the spring. What have you seen from him? And I know it's early, but what about uh, Bockhorse as well? How, how well, excited are you about him? Uh, uh, Blake has informed Matt Bockhorse and Noah DeHaan that he remembers how it was to be a first-term freshman. You know, he'd been here one term in a summer. So uh, he's, he's now an experienced guy. But anyway, he came in with a hurt shoulder. So uh, getting his strength up, great attitude, very smart, learning what to do. Uh, you know, his, his shortcoming right now is uh, in the weight room. And Coach, Coach Bass and him just do an unbelievable job building them up. So he's really, really coming on. And, of course, Matt and uh, – Noah just got here. That they're two that they will. Matt Bockhorse, you mark it down. He will be the next Jay Galermo, if you will, as far as entertaining the troops and being the leader and all. But he's very outgoing uh, and a really good player. I think yesterday after workouts, he did 225, 24 times. So uh, for those you don't know, that's well over 400 pounds. So pretty, pretty neat. Does Gage Cervenka have a chance to, to get some playing time this year? Man, yeah. Gage is going to be something special. Now, having never played offense much at all in his life, moving over, you know, he reluctantly came over. You know, uh, my group is the – a lot of people like to say the last stop before the bus station. But <laughs> we uh, – I don't look at it that way. But I tell them we are the skill position. Uh, I tell all the kids in camp, I said, look over there, look at all those receivers, DBs and all that. They can step with the wrong foot, maybe even use the wrong hand and still make a play. If we take one wrong step, it's a tackle for a loss or a quarterback sack. And everybody's booing us. You know, no, so, but now he's, he's balled in and man, you ought to see him. About 320, quick as a cat, uh, fight a chainsaw on it running. I mean, he's uh, he's just what you're looking for. Do you plan to move him around or just keep him primarily center? Well, keep him at center right now because that's uh, hard to, you know, it, it, center was a little easier when they when you're under center. But at shotgun, it's a big, big difference. So it takes a little bit more time. But, yes, he played guard, you know, last year some in some games. But uh, he, he'll, be, uh, he'll be in competition for the job. Has Gage uh, made, made it better for Fastinelli, especially in the spring? We heard he pushed him a lot, and actually kind of, kind of you guys were kind of iffy on which one's going to be. He the did. He, he pushed him uh, real well. You know, just his athleticism, his strength. You know, when you're a grappler, the way he was, don't quote me on this. I don't want to screw it up, but I think he was four-time state champ. I think he lost one match, and I don't know. It's unbelievable. He's got such good balance. It's hard to get him off his feet. You got great snaps out of Pollard, Ankrum, Simpson last year. Do any of these freshmen, considering you've built up some depth, have a chance to, to play this year? They do. You know, I've always said I'd love to play 10 people. Obviously, it's hard to rotate a center. Paul Justin Falsinelli deserved to play more last year, but it's just hard to do. We played some at guard, you know, and uh, – you certainly didn't want to upset your quarterback by throwing wild snaps. But, you know, he, he, he played some there and some at guard. But uh, he was one that should have played more, deserved to play more. But due to the position, it's just hard to do. And, we, you know, we talked about it. Uh, he says he understands, but they don't understand. But 
You know, you tell them till you're blue in the face. But because I tell them everything we're gonna do, you know, they don't hear but what they want to hear. So, coach, it seems like you really. Up